I'll be some of the fourth. Ah, remember that day. Okay, okay. <laughs> oh, the ancestors send their blessings to you. Peace and blessings. The ancestors. Today, we're here to address the omissions by the Pope on his visit to America. In COBRA, the National Coalition of Blacks for Reparations in America, would like to thank everyone for coming out this evening. We're here to address the omissions from the Pope's messages during his visit to the U.S. in relationship to people of African descent. In addition, we are calling on all people of African descent with a special invitation to black Catholics and the Catholic community in general to stand with us. Our efforts here are to begin a conversation, to begin dialogue with aims of righting historical wrongs committed by the Roman Catholic Church against African people and people of African descent. Wrongs that continue to negatively impact us globally on a daily basis. We're here not to cast dispersions, confront or attack the Catholic Church. Pope Francis or the Catholic community in the US or Chicago, black, white, Hispanic or other. We're here to tell the truth and again call for action that would assist in the repair of African peoplehood globally. Let us begin by indicating that we are pleased that, the Pope, that Pope Francis invoked the memory and spirit of our great ancestor, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., during one of his addresses. And I quote Pope Francis, to use a telling phrase of the Reverend Martin Luther King, we can say that we have defaulted on a promissory note, and now it's time to honor it. In invoking Dr. King's spirit, with this particular statement, Pope Francis has opened the door to the discussion of reparations. As we know, Dr. King made this statement in the context of calling for reparations in America. Since this door was cracked by Pope Francis, we would like to open it fully so we can explore the depth of the church's role in the injury of African people and the fullness of its obligation to join in our repair. First, the injury. The historical record will affirm that the Roman Catholic Church, number one, ordered the destruction of African nations, the genocide of native nations, and the enslavement of Africans and people of African descent. Beginning in 1411 and 1430, Pope Martin V issued two papal bulls said to have created and established the international slave trade, ordering the Portuguese to go into Africa ignoring all laws of sovereignty and divine rights, and invade, plunder, and reduce its inhabitants to perpetual slavery. His, su his successor, Pope Eugene IV, ratified his orders and in 1438 extended to Spain the same mission and what would later become the Americas. In 1452, Pope Nicholas V wrote in a separate edict for Spain ordering and granting, and I quote, free an ample faculty to invade, search out, expunge, vanish, and subdue all pagans and enemies of Christ whatsoever place, and their persons to reduce to perpetual slavery, and all of their kingdoms, possessions, and goods to apply and appropriate." Unquote. In 1458, his successor, Pope Calixtus III, continued this grant to Spain and Portugal. Papal Bulls of 1492 and 1493 authorized the monarchs to invade, search out, capture, vanquish, and subdue, and appropriate all goods whatsoever held and possessed by them and reduce their persons to perpetual slavery. Finally, in 1537, Pope Paul III abolished the enslavement of indigenous peoples in America denying the humanity of Africans and setting in motion the brutal enslavement of Africans and people of African descent that continued for more than 350 years after. Number two, the Roman Catholic Church inaugurated the racial hatred and racial structuring of the world that has Africans and African descendants on the bottom of humanity in the areas of recognition of the value of their humanity and the safety and respect of their persons and property. Prior to the orders of the church mentioned above, Africans and people of African descent were held in high esteem, and in many cases, the highest place of esteem and respect globally 
among humanity. For instance, when the first Europeans entered Africa, Egypt, the Greek historian Herodotus, who described the, the, those inhabitants as having woolly hair and burnt skin, also described them as gods and the Greeks as children in comparison. The Romans held the Ethiopians in high regards and enjoyed diplomatic relations as equals. In the East, we know that the first Chinese dynasty was founded by African descendants. Statuary all over the Orient shows that the Buddha himself was of African descent. And in Japan, it was commonly asserted that in order to be a true samurai, you had to have part African blood. Throughout the Eastern Europe, prior to the church's orders that I described, the black Madonna and child was venerated in nearly every cathedral for hundreds of years. Even in what is now called the Americas, Africans were held in high esteem as the temples and colossal heads of the Omics, the first African civilization in America attests. It was only after the church's official orders and the actions of those who received them that Africans began to suffer from the global abuse of denigration of our unique historical character. Number three, the Roman Catholic Church has and is benefiting the most from these crimes against African humanity. To quote a few sites, the Catholic Church is the biggest financial power wealth accumulator and property owner in existence. She is a greater possessor of material riches than any other single institution, corporation, bank, giant trust, government, or state on the whole globe. And secondly, I quote, the church's wealth in the U.S. alone is greater than that of the five wealthiest giant corporations of the country. When to that is added all the real estate, property, and stocks and shares abroad, the staggering accumulation of the wealth of the Catholic Church becomes so formidable as to de deny any rational assessment. Now to the church's obligations. With the church's history described above and its global position in the world, and at a time when black life is being extinguished in American epidemic numbers, it is of grave importance that Pope Francis specifically address this history and the need for America and American Catholics and their institutions to focus their attention and resources on these conditions of African descendants. Therefore, we are calling all religious and spiritual peoples to stand with us as we call upon Pope Francis and the Roman Catholic Church to one, offer an official apology to those of those actions by the church that has led to the continued devastation of African life and limitation of their life chances here in America and globally. Two, full recognition by the Catholic Church of its role it has played in shaping a global, global racial consciousness that discriminates against, that marginalizes, and oppresses African people and people of African, African descent 24-7, 365, no matter where we exist on the planet. Three, immediate and full use of its global resources to assist repertory justice organs in reversing this anti-African global racial consciousness and its effects. And four, immediate and full use of its geopolitical influence in calling on America and all Western countries to move swiftly and without reserve in acknowledging, observing, and fulfilling the mission of the International Decade of People of African Descent 2015 to 2024 as declared by the United Nations. And COBRA thanks all who have came out today and urge you all to contact the Archdiocese in Chicago to share your views on this important issue of reparatory justice and demand a continuation of this conversation that Pope Francis has begun. We have called, and we're going to introduce Mama D, and she's going to let her speak. My name is Cam Howard. I am the regional, Midwest Regional Chair of the National Coalition of Blacks for Reparations in America and the Chicago Chapter Co Chair. Hi. Hi. Before you speak, Mama D, he asked me to speak to the whiting out of, of the media in America. 
the media will pick up nothing in relationship to the injuries and crimes that they committed against people of African descent when we rise up to demand for justice. As I, as I post to say, there would be no crime, if there were no crimes against high humanity, there would be no crimes in our streets. In London, just three months ago, 20,000 Africans met and marched on the government house in London to demand reparations, and no media outlet in America picked that up. 20,000 Africans and people of African descent. We understand that the media's lack of presence here is part of the global continuation of crimes against African uh, humanity, and we are not standing for it, and that's why we're using our own media sources to make sure this gets out to our young brothers and sisters, and they can join in this struggle for repair. Mama D? Um, I'm Evangel Mama D. Love, y'all knew me in. And um, whereas the Pope um, bears responsibility, my concern is with the President of the United States. On March 25th, 2013, the United Nations did a major undertaking. Again, there was a media blackout in America. On March 25th, 2015, the United Nations unveiled a statue to uh, uh, chattel slaves and the transatlantic slave trade. That major memorial took six years in the making. The Pope uh, uh, showed up at the United Nations. He did not bother to make one comment about that major uh, unveiling of that memorial on that same day a 10-year decade for people of African descent was kicked off by the United Nations. In addition to that, they declared 2015 as the year of women and slavery. Again, no mention. But the Pope had the affrontery to go to a different location and, and view ground zero and talk about September 11. As he quoted Abraham Lincoln in this new birth of freedom. Well, the new birth of freedom after 246 years of black people being a chattel, which means movable property, a movable property thing, 246 years from the cradle to the grave, from sun up to midnight down, living a daily life of terror and torture. He had, he said nothing about that. And on December 18th, 2015, will mark the 150th anniversary of the ratifying of the 13th Amendment that abolished slavery in America and throughout its territory, except when you are convicted of a crime and you become a recycled slave through incarceration. And in addition, the President of the United States visited uh, just on yesterday, after the Pope, he visited the United Nations. The United Nations is located in Manhattan, New York. He did not comment on that major memorial or anything else about the racism in America that the United Nations has condemned and cited America for their human rights violations and for their uh, racism and police killings of black men and boys. There was no mention of that either. As a pope in Rome who is supposed to be representing Christ here on earth, he did not mention the fact that racism is a sin because and spreads an antichrist spirit because it teaches hate and he didn't bother to mention that either so i think when we look at the president of the united states we need to i have to call on a national observance for the first time in 150 years to acknowledge black people as uh, uh, with a national observance, with the kind of fervor that he uh, uh, honors uh, 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 ducks, uh, not ducks, but turkeys and, 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 and uh, rabbits and everything else that he can find the time to, to honor. But he has said nothing on January 31st, which marked the 150th anniversary of the uh, signing of the 13th Amendment, he said nothing. On uh, uh, January 1st, 2013, which marked the 150th anniversary of the Emancipation Proclamation, he said nothing, but he's done plenty. Uh, my thing is, you know, this year is going to be very important 
to next year because election is coming. And we are saying, oh, some, some of us saying we are going to back uh, Hillary Clinton. But we talk about our children, our husbands, our brothers being in for profit prison. After slavery, what do you call for profit prison? We still have not gotten it. The thing is, we never said never again. Now you are going to back Hillary Clinton, but who put you in the position in the first place? If she's not running for election, she won't be saying that that has devastated the black family. But because she's running for election and she needs her vote, now she comes out. Look in the mirror, look President Clinton in the face. He has made millions of dollars and I believe he's getting cash back from those who he has favored for, for profit prison. Black people got to stand up. Black people got to, stupidity is no virtue. Okay, you cannot back Hillary Clinton when she and her husband warehouse our children, yes. our husbands, our brothers in prison. That's right. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank everybody for coming out. Beautiful gathering. I would like to speak on the violence in Chicago because it's a legacy of slavery. You may say, how is it a legacy of slavery? We're saying that this is COINTELPRO, that the federal government has allowed hundreds of metric tons of crack cocaine to be dumped in the city of Chicago through narco-terrorism. No narco-terrorism groups have really been round up, but all local, small nobodies in our neighborhood has been round up and put to jail. And we're saying that this is a Cointel Pro program and it's stemming from the 1960s to now. And we're, we're not living under Jim Crow. We're not living under the slave system. We're living under Cointel Pro and that's where all the violence is coming from. We're living with a, with a chief of police that don't even know how to drive around Chicago to show you that this is all uh, done in a way that they get to, they, uh, the results is shown that, it, that the uh, commander, the head police, who comes from New Jersey, who has to use MapQuest to find where the scene of the crime is, and they refuse to get rid of this man. This is uh, uh, so they can blame a man and say that he is incompetent. No, he's not incompetent. He ran a COINTEL pro program in uh, Jersey, and he's running a COINTEL program in Chicago. The drugs that are coming to our community is coming th directly to Mexico, to Chicago, and only the little people on the streets is, uh, and the drug addicts is caught with it. That means that the Chicago police got to be a part of it. That's right. My name is uh, Pastor Joel Washington. I'm from Cunapusa and Goma, from Reformation Church, Chicago. Uh, I'm also a freelance writer, and I'm here covering this, as well as speaking out. By the way, kind brother, uh, there's a flow of illegal guns into Chicago. We need to stop the flow of illegal guns, not only in the city of Chicago, but in the state of Illinois. It's coming from outside the state. And we need a coalition to deal with that. And that needs to be taken down to the mayor's office. But to the point, this gathering is very important. Uh, the assessment, the critique that was given by uh, uh, Brother Cam Howard and Cobra's statement, that needs to be uh, uh, projected and developed and shared as a countermeasure to the publicity campaign that has happened with the Pope being here. We, I don't doubt the Pope's honesty, I don't doubt the Pope's uh, moral authority, but this critique is a healthy alternative view, and we need to get a copy of it, and we need to share it with the public and get it out to overcome the whiteout of the media and the very overly friendly acceptance of this visit without any critique. Now, they did allow critiques of the abuse of children. The white uh, Catholics, they're very organized, around the critique of children, of the abuse of children in the Catholic Church. But there's nothing said along the lines of the Afri 
enslaved African history of the church that goes back uh, almost 500 years, et cetera. To 1100. So, 1100. Yes. So now, here's the piece. In addition to that, it's my understanding, this, the Pope is a Jesuit from the Jesuit order. Mm. Mm. And St. Peter Claver, which is the patron saints of Catholics, he's a, he's a, he's a Latino. But St. Peter Claver called himself the slave of the enslaved Africans because it was St. Peter Claver who tried to stop slavery in South America, okay? And he formed a sisterhood and brotherhood of Africans who met the enslaved African ships and gave them immediate relief. And he's considered a saint, but yet he was a Jesuit and the Pope is a Jesuit and he doesn't recognize St. Peter's Claver's calling a slave of the enslaved Africans. That was his slogan. And that's why Catholic churches all over the Americas, in the black communities, have a church or a community named after him. So I needed to, these, 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 there are these contradictions and they need to be raised up. And I'd like to add that to the and Cobra critique as we go forward. But this is a very important gathering. Uh, numbers are not everything, but this is a media outlet piece. The alternative media, as usual, be, will be our medium until we get the mass, what we call it, no, the established order business media to accept this message. So I want to thank uh, Encobra that you're doing Chicago, Encobra National. You're doing a wonderful job. We support Encobra. I'm just back from the Nguzo Saba conference in Los Angeles. The uh, salute to the seven principles, the 50th anniversary. This is the 50th anniversary of the seven principles, the Nguzo Saba. The 50th anniversary of the founding of the US organization and African American Cultural Center. And so it was many activists from all over the country just gathered there. We just got home yesterday. And so this, I'm proposing this as a project with also within the Nguzo Saba Conference and the National Association of, of Kawaii Organizations. So thank you very much. The Vatican Treasury. They have a treasury also, just like we have a treasury in this country, just like you have a national treasury. Well, the Swiss is their national treasury. That's actually the guards that's guarding the Pope. So all that need to be brought in question because all this other stuff couldn't have happened without the fueling of Europe through slavery. Slavery fueled Europe and put it head and shoulders above all the other nations. Prior to them, they were not the most dominant nation. Yeah. If I can have one final statement is that um, in Cobra called this gathering, uh, but this gathering we consider ourselves reparations enforcers. And reparations enforcers, any individual, any corporation, any institution, any government, any organization that understands that reparations for people of African descent is a human right as declared by the 2001 Durban Declaration and Program of Action, which said slavery to slave trade, colonialism, and apartheid were crimes against humanity. There is not an international entity that is designed to enforce that declaration, so we have to do it. Progressive elected officials have to do it. Progressive organizations, progressive governments, progressive institutions, progressive corporations have to enforce that declaration to ensure that African people are repaired from this injury. Those entities that have injured African people are criminals in relationship to African people, whether it's a Chase Bank or a Roman Catholic Church, and we're giving them the opportunity to amend those for those crimes and assist in the healing of our people. Finally, we say that reparations is not about the past, it's not so much about the present, it's about the future, the future of African people on the planet and also the future of humanity. Because as African goes, there goes humanity. And so right, we, str we, we struggle for the future of a just and righteous planet and for African people to be whole and have a, have a position of leadership in the, in the planet's future going forward. And then uh, red, black, and green up there and so a lot of times different groups hijack our people and they exploit our people and they use our people. So 
Uh, we don't have to ask anybody when it comes to our people. Uh, in the signs of the militant that I am, we ain't had to ask that white man nothing who got a black Jesus up there and didn't say nothing to the Pope about reparations. So since he wouldn't say nothing about it, we had it in front of his place. All right. You ain't gonna keep using us. And then when it come down to talking about uh, slavery, talking about the role and the, the, that they played in it, you don't wanna say nothing about it. You wanna talk about 2015. Well, how did we get to 2015? How did all we get here? And we want the church to talk about for profit prison in America. Are we that stupid that we don't know that for profit prison is slavery? That is slavery all over again. You charging eighteen dollars an hour for people working honestly, and then you're going to charge one dollar for uh, people working as slaves in, in for profit prison. We want the church to stop to stop for profit prison. The church can do it. Stop for profit prison in California. White boys, murderers knows how to go on hunger strike so that they can be treated as human beings. Here we are, we are talking about slavery, slavery. We are still being enslaved. And then, after all, Hillary Clinton is going to come to our churches and ask for our vote. Yeah. When her husband put us in this predicament, her husband, three strikes and you are out. While his brother, the Ku Klux Klan brother, was uh, trading drugs in Arkansas. I mean, we cannot take stupidity as virtue. We got to speak out. The church has to fight for us. We are talking about church putting us in this place, then the church will free us from, from for profit prison. For profit prison is slavery all over again. Yes. Thank you, Bob. Okay. I have a comment. What we fail to realize, I'm Vanita K. Bennett Bonaparte. I'm the media director for the National Coalition of Blacks for Reparations in Chicago. We fail to realize that there is a psychological level of slavery that we are not identifying in the religious institutions that we have been educated through. We must understand that the Catholic Church has utilized the Bible as well as academics to continue to enslave us. The entire system of which St. Sabina has been created identifies with having an Afrocentric culture. So in order to be able to entrap these people from a religious standpoint, they identify with the Africans, which is an insult to those people who are African. How can you turn in one place and enslave me, but then you want to embrace me and tell me that there is a God that I should identify with according to who you are? We have a white priest, but he's supposed to be treated like the great God. So we must understand that there are psychological abuses they deal with slavery and the slave trade from academics and education. Now they've created a prison to pipeline system where they're only creating another level of chattel slavery through the educational system. And we must know this and understand it and identify it. Well said. I think it's so important that we speak up about this because silence has no place in this. Uh, I read an article about the Italian Americans. They kept quiet about it. They were so ashamed of what happened to them. And so what I want us to realize is that one time the Queen of England said that it wasn't any law against slavery. We want people to be more so humane to know that you don't need a law to know that you're not supposed to mistreat people. So we want it to be known that human rights is right, right where it should be. You should be giving it up. Okay. See you at the next meeting. All right. Okay, I got to give you a call. We